Hello, this is Joseph Drust, and this is a quick tutorial on taking photographic images and turning them into high-quality 3D assets for game engines. The programs we'll be using in this tutorial are ZBrush and a program called Autodesk PhotoScene Editor version 2. To start off, we're going to simply take quick images of a stump. Uh, these images were taken very quickly. As you can see here, I am simply just taking photos and walking in a circle around the stump. Now this process doesn't have to be precise or exact. You just want to get enough images to kind of fill the space and avoid any gaps where the photos would be taken. Now once you have those photos all created, you'll have them loaded in a folder here. And the first thing you want to do is load up the Project Photofly photo scene editor. And in here, when you start it up, you'll have a thing that says get started, create a new photo scene. So the first thing we're going to do is click that, and we're going to load in our tree stump images. Now I've got quite a few images here of the stump. As you can see, they're nothing really fancy. They're just rotating around the stump, and then I have two that are kind of over the top of the stump, but as you can see, a lot of it's cropped off, so there's really not anything too advanced or anything technical about these images. So we're going to load those in quick, so we're just going to hold shift and make sure they're all selected and load them in, and we're going to hit open. Now these get put up here, and you see it now says Compute Photo Scene. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And you have an option to wait or have it email you. Um, if you have it email you, it will upload the stuff on your own and then send you an email when it's done. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to click the wait button. And as you can see now, it starts processing the data. And what it's doing is it's sending these images to the cloud server from Autodesk and then loading them into a scene for you. So it's doing all the processing power of combining all these images together off-site. So it's not on your machine taking up your processor uh, power. So <clears throat> after this stuff loads, you'll get a scene that looks similar to something like this. It's going to give you this error message that says this is a draft mesh. And basically what this means is that you have the option here to select or deselect areas on the surface of this mesh to tell the program which objects you want occluded from the final calculation. So just going to OK to that. And then we're going to go up here to the actual uh, move rotate icon here. It's going to rotate around the scene a little bit so you can kind of see what it's doing. As you can see, it's taken all these photos and created 3D geometry out of it. Now, all the photos down here are loaded and you can see they're represented by these camera icons that are circling around the actual object. Now this line that's coming from these cameras shows you how the photos were taken. So the start photo was taken from right here and you can see it continues all the way around the line. And then I came back up and took a few here and one here. Now if you want to see what any of those photos look like you can kind of scrub on the bottom and you can actually see how it's like highlighting the mesh as to uh, where these photos fit together to create the geometry. If you have something in your scene that you don't want, so like if I didn't want this area over here, now is the time that you select the stuff you want to generate. So if I only wanted this section here, or say just like this limb, I just would take this little tool here, the lasso tool, and just select that part. When I hit this mesh quality up here and change it to the final draft that I want done, or the final production quality, it's only going to do the part I have selected. So since I want this whole base generated, I'm just going to deselect everything and just make sure none of it is selected right now. But if you end up with a lot of artifacts outside the space or stuff that looks really weird, just select the stuff you want and then click this button. So now we're going to come up here to where it says Mesh Quality gra Draft. And we're going to click that and an option box will come up and it'll ask you what kind of quality you want to output mobile, standard, or maximum. Now standard resolution is about 120 thousand triangles and maximum is about 500,000 triangles. I haven't done a test with mobile so I'm not sure how many triangles it actually would be but standard and maximum work pretty well. So for this mesh for the stump since we're doing it in game if we want to bake it out to normal maps or get like you know really good quality maps out of it for just the structure of the geometry we're going to choose maximum and we're just going to hit OK. <clears throat> it's going to tell you here that we don't have any selected in the mesh. This is the thing I was showing with the lasso. If I had a part selected on the mesh, it would only do that part. And so it's telling me now that no selection was made, so the entire photo scene would process, and that's fine. So I'm just going to hit OK. And then, of course, it has you to create the scene again and ask for your email, because it will send you an email reminder if you don't want to wait for this. Um, for this tutorial again, I'm just going to click Wait. 
And now you can see it goes back to the scene editor up here. And so now it's loading in the high quality model that it's sent, it sent the draft to the server along with the photos. The photos and stuff were calculated into a higher polygon mesh and then sent back to your machine. So this is now loading in this high quality mesh that should be roughly about 500,000 triangles. So here we go, we're back. As you can see, it has loaded in the higher resolution version of the model that was created from the images. There's a lot of programs that are on the internet right now that will actually generate uh, geometry like this from stereographic images. Uh, one of them called AGSoft StereoScan and PhotoScan does a little better job with the geometry reconstruction so you'll get like some a little bit nicer kind of uh, high-res mesh details. This program though, hands down, has the best diffuse quality as any of the ones that I've found so far. The You can see how it's just brilliantly stitched all those uh, images that I took of the stump together and it's like perfectly clean, well blended together and you still get a lot of detail out of the image. So even though we only get, you know, not the strongest actually mesh resolution on this, we can take this texture and use it as a bump map across the model to kind of get some of that uh, detail back onto it. So now that we have this generated, you can see it's all high res and pretty. We're just going to save this out to an OBJ. So I'm going to go up here, File, and do Export Scene As. And here it gives you an option for where you want to save it. So I'm just going to change this directory, and we're already in kind of the tree area with all my pictures. So I'm just going to label this stump and hit save. And then we're going to change the format to OBJ. And then we're going to hit OK. Now what's this doing? It's just going to export out the model and then export out the textures that correspond with the model. Now if I look in the folder that has all these trees and come down here and you can actually see the texture maps that it spits out. So it's got three of them here spitting out. So this mesh has generated three sets of textures along with it. And if you look at the size of these textures, you got 14096, 14096, and 12048. So you're getting a lot of texture resolution on the model, which is pretty good. So now we're going to need to take this and load it into ZBrush so we can actually turn it into something that we can use in our game engine.